So for me to go back, uh, the XP zone was just a word. Uh, if you put it in Scrabble or uh, word for it for the ones that are more technically savvy, it's 20 points. If you put it on board, if you put it in a more strategic place, it can be more points. Uh, but that's what it is. And I want to go back to actually the origin uh, of the XP zone, what Chris Wilde was saying, that really it's a unifying concept in how to better quantify the exposure. I talk uh, this morning about uh, the XP zone, a word that has been used during this conference uh, a few times. And so really the question is, was it, what is it, what can we do with it, and is it meaningful to, uh, to go this way? So to go back to its origin, or one of its origins, um, the Expo Zone uh, really was coined by Chris Wilde, the current director of uh, IARC. And basically, he coined this term um, at a time that a lot of our resources were going into genetics and finding the genetic sources of, um, of disease. Um, and he was really recognizing the disparity between the emphasis on genetics versus the environment and basically put forward the idea that we actually should be focusing on the environment and should at least put the same focus and effort into quantifying and measuring the environment and the environmental causes of disease. And so when he presented it, he basically um, described it as all environmental exposure. So basically having a holistic view of all the exposure that we are exposed to. We're not exposed to one single component. We are exposed to many different things in our life. He also um, addressed the point that we're not exposed at one point in time. We're actually exposed to during different stages of our life to different chemicals, to different stimuli that we have. And we should actually have emphasis on those. And of course, they should be relevant for disease. Now, based on the information that we have today, and of course, these are, these are rough estimates, uh, but based on all the um, genetic studies, we can estimate that probably around 10 to 30 percent of the chronic diseases are, have some kind of genetic um, origin. Well, actually, um, most of the diseases have a very large environmental component being 70 to 90 percent. Now, in that recognition, and this is where the exposome came back, so this original term was coined in 2005, and I built till 2010, there was no mention of the exposome that kind of disappeared to the background. And in 2010, uh, this term came back. And, and one of the people that brought it really back to the attention was Steve Rappaport, which you all know. And here is a nice picture of him. And basically, he made the argument that, well, actually, environmental exposures are just poorly characterized. And that is the reason that we have trouble in identifying those environmental causes of disease. So we really should be trying to actually improve that. The other argument that he made is that we kind of have a fragmented view of exposures. We tend to split our vision into, well, we study radiation, so we have radiation epidemiology, we have people that do air pollution, and we have people that do occupational uh, exposure assessment and epidemiology. And really, all of those different exposures and all those different exposures together are really changing our internal milieu, our internal environment. And even the interaction between what happens outside our body what happens inside our body is really important, and that is determining our internal chemical environment, if you want to call it uh, like that. And so you can think about, for instance, how the gut flora changes what we, what we eat, changing our internal chemical environment. So to go back to his argument, his, basically our, his argument was that we have basically ill-suited uh, techniques to really <laughs> quantify that multitude of exposure, all those thousands of chemicals that we are surrounded with in our daily life. And so he argued that the way that we are approaching it uh, might be inefficient and maybe we could go to a more agnostic approach where he was arguing for a top-down approach, which basically would mean that we would select people with a disease, we would select people without a disease, and we basically would, preferably in uh, prospectively collected samples, measure all the chemicals, all the exposures that people have been exposed to their exposure experience until that, that date, and we basically compare, compare that to actually find the environmental cause of disease. And it was our aim to do that with only profiles, which could be transcriptomics, <coughs> could be electronics, could be any of these techniques, to really measure the multitude of exposures. And so identifying these different exposure or signals, basically the argument was then to develop high fruit biomarkers, and then basically work your way back from those biomarkers, that signal, to actually find out which external causes are really related to that internal 
pattern that you have picked up and so to identify solely positive disease. I think the underlying unifying principle of the exposome is approved at code assessment. I don't think there's one single technique, there's not one single uh, design that would actually have the magic solution to the problem that we are facing. It is the combination of all these things that will get us further. So that needs advances in all these different techniques, uh, measurement techniques, it needs advances in getting access to database that we might be using, the thing that Marty was talking about. Uh, we need to think about better and novel study designs, and we need to think about using the program statistics. So I think we still have to start thinking outside the box. We have been doing studies in, in the kind of way that we have been doing for a long while, they have been very successful, they have been very useful, but I think now we have to start looking at how we can actually use these new technologies to actually come up with new study designs, new ways to actually try to delve into that iceberg <coughs> that we have to discover.